Good afternoon, hello. My name is Daniel. I've completed Ironman Wales twice. I'm hoping that me sharing my knowledge and experience from those races is going to help you have the best day that you can have at Ironman Wales. Okay, hi guys. Welcome back to another video. I am Andrew Horsell Turner. I have done Ironman Wales twice, a bit like Triathlon Dan. Um, but I just wanted to jump on in the build up. I think we're how many days out now? We're two weeks out from Ironman Wales 2023. I raced the race in 2022, finishing fifth, and I also did it as an amateur back in 2019. So yeah, tune in. I'm gonna give you some top tips on swim, bike, run, transition, and just basically how to enjoy Tembe. So yeah, I guess we jump straight into it. Uh, swim, bike, and run. So you swim at North Beach. Um, it's a two lap swim with an Australian exit or halfway. Um, I guess my biggest tip for, for the swim itself is just make sure you've gone open water swimming in the sea before the race. Um, you've got two weeks now, so if you haven't already been, get yourself to the ocean, even if you have to drive a few hours, get yourself in the sea, even if it's a bit wavy, a bit choppy, because last year we had some pretty extreme waves. Um, it was actually quite a fast day in the water, but we had some pretty choppy sea conditions. And I can't remember the exact number, but I think something like 170, 180 people didn't make it out of the sea. So a bit doom and gloom to start. If you haven't been in the sea yet, get in the sea, just get used to being in the waves, get used to the salt water, and you'll just enjoy the two loop course. It's super enclosed. It's pretty easy to sight the boys. And there's gonna be obviously a couple of thousand of you out there. So there's nothing to panic about. Uh, those that have done our manuals previously and just wanna watch this video for a bit of a tune up, uh, the swim this year is reversed, so you'll be swimming out to the lifeguard hut, but hut, ramp, whatever you want to call it. You'll go across the beach and then you'll basically do a long stretch back into the beach event. Obviously still around Gosco Rock, um, but yeah, completely reversed. So once you exit the water, you'll have probably one of the longest but most epic transitions you'll ever have. And your T1 starts. Uh, with a one point something kilometer run uh, from the beach up the zigzags all the way into transition. Um, I guess the biggest tip for this is there's pink bags. Make sure you pick your pink bag up, put your shoes on and take your pink bag with you. Um, what I tend to do is put my running shoes and a bottle of water in the bag. I'll take the, take the bottle of water out, I'll put my running shoes on and then I actually stuff the pink bag down my wetsuit so I haven't got to carry it. And then as I'm running to transition, I can use the bottle of water to splash my face, have a mouthful of water, and then again, I normally stash the bottle in my wetsuit because when you get to the actual changing tent, you'll strip the wetsuit off, the bag, the bottle, everything will fall out, chuck it all in a bag, it's nice and easy. And it means your hands are free so you can really just like get into the run. Make sure when you're running to transition though, you just acknowledge the crowd because you probably got five, six deep on both sides of the road as you go through there. And yeah, it gives you shivers when you think about it. Extra special if you're leading the race. Extra special if you're leading the race. Um, top tip as well is don't run threshold effort through town, even though you feel really good and you're wearing alpha flies. Top tip. <laughs> okay, so um, the bike course. And I think this is probably what makes Ironman World is super like famous. Well, I guess there's ever like the swim, the bike, the run are so unique that that's what makes Ironman Wells so famous. But the bike course has, uh, based on my Garmin, 2,400 meters worth of elevation gain. Um, it is punchy, it's some rough roads, it's soul destroying <laughs> in places. Um, but it is truly epic. Um, you basically do a big loop, which is about 109 kilometers. Uh, for those that do miles, it's about 69, 70 miles. Um, and that will take you uh, up Heartbreak Hill um, through Saundersfoot. Um, the crowds there are incredible. Um, and then you then basically retrace the steps on a smaller loop, um, which is 40 miles. Um, and then, yeah, back into transition. I guess my tips for how to ride this course is don't be afraid to push a little bit harder on the hills because you will have, after every hill in, in Tenby, you have a nice little descent. Um, it's very rare that it's like flat. You're basically going up or down. 
So don't be afraid to go a little bit over what you actually need to do on the hills. And then obviously when you can have a little bit of a break, get your fuel, fuel in, get your food in, then I guess that's, I guess how you should go about racing it. So um, this is one of the things that I didn't do last year, but I really wish I had done. Um, if you have booked your bags for special needs, or you can still book your bags for special needs, go and get special needs bags. Um, it's basically located at the top of uh, Saunders Foot by the, the big round about the top. It's the best way to make sure that you get enough nutrition on race day. Um, I tried to carry as much as I could on me and then try and pick up a little bit on course. Um, long story short is that wasn't good enough for what I needed on the race day. So with your coach, with your friends, with your family, whoever it is, work out how many carbs you need, work out how many calories you need um, and utilize your special needs. Uh, my dad's doing the race day already and I've already told him to plan to store at least two bottles in his bag um, just because you know then you're only actually fueling for a 70 mile loop and then you've only then got a fuel for a 40 mile loop instead of actually just trying to fuel for the whole 112. Um, it just breaks down the race. It means that you're just gonna start the run not like on a carb or calorie deficit and hopefully you're starting the run feeling, you know, not hungry. If you're feeling hungry at the beginning of a marathon, that's a, a bad place to be. Another tip for that special needs bag is putting anything else in that bag that you might need. Um, I guess the caveat is that if you put it in the bag and you don't use it, you will lose it because they'll just throw it in the bin afterwards. Um, but, you know, I hear people have put like tubes in there, uh, people have put sandwiches, they put, you know, literally anything that you feel like you might or could need. Say you're having a really bad day, something that you might need, even a rain jacket. If, you, if the weather's looking a bit, you know, on and off and you want to start the race without a jacket, but then you do that first loop and you realize actually you're freezing cold. You could leave a jacket in there, you could leave gloves in there, but just be prepared that you're not gonna get them back if you don't pick them up. So at the end of the bike, you'll fly down the hill into Tenby. You do this short little climb, um, which I have a couple of pictures from uh, a photographer there. I don't actually know what his photography name is, but I'll post his Instagram there. Um, but he caught a few cool pictures coming up this last little climb up into Tenby and yeah, you roll through the town center and into transition. Um, it's not the best surface because the, the transition area where you rack your bikes is a tarmac car park. And I leave my bike shoes on my bike. Um, I know a lot of people will walk through transition with their bike shoes on, so that's probably the best way of doing it. But uh, the floor is pretty gravelly. If those who did 70.3 Swansea, it's very similar. It will hurt your feet a little bit to run on it. So just be prepared for that. Uh, if you don't need to sprint through it and you can sort of take a bit of speed off, um, I definitely would save your feet for the marathon. Um, but I guess for me, my biggest tip for T2 is just really trying to reset. Um, you've just done 112 miles of probably one of the hardest, you know, Ironman bike courses in the world, debatable, but um, yeah, try and get that little bit of a reset, sit down, get your shoes on, take any nutrition that you need in T2, store your pockets with the gels that you like. Um, yeah, basically just get ready for what is, yeah, again, a hellish, uh, but incredible 26.2 miles round Tenby. Okay, so here is the, I guess, the most difficult part of the day for everyone. Uh, most people quite enjoy the ride, most people somewhat enjoy the swim um, but the marathon is kind of where it kind of makes or breaks your day and if you're walking by mile one at the beginning of 26.2 miles you know you're in for a long day um, I wasn't quite walking at one mile but I was walking by 18k so almost two laps <laughs> um, just make sure that you understand that the demands of an Ironman marathon are very different to those of like a normal marathon or what you might have done in your long training runs. Um, especially like those that might be looking to run four and a half, five hours, even five and a half hours or more. It's not necessarily about just how quickly you can run, but it's more about how well you can keep moving forward throughout the race. So 
one of the biggest tips I always think is like utilizing the terrain. You'll run out of transition and you'll go sort of flat through town and then a slight downhill and then you're straight into the first big hill. And those that don't know Tembi, you basically start at the bottom of the hill, you run four and a half, five kilometers up towards the top. There's a little bit out and back section with new hedges. And then you're then enjoying that four and a half kilometer, four, four and a half kilometer downhill back into town before kind of up and downing um, and zigzagging through town. Um, but trying to break up the race is probably my biggest tip. Um, there's a feed station on the hill. I think if you're gonna walk, use that as a walk because it's a good opportunity to get, you know, a couple of cups of, of hydration, uh, a gel, uh, go to the toilet, <laughs> whatever you kind of need, but really try and utilize it on the uphill when you're gonna go, when you're gonna be going slow anyway. Um, and then when you can, and especially on the downhills, just try and keep running. Um, if you keep running on the downhills, um, you're gonna maintain better speed. If you just, yeah, try and break it up. Um, what, what did Dan say about it? <laughs> <laughs> For one second. <laughs> no, but I actually, I think you just gotta take, take the run as three sections. It's four loops, uh, four loops of 10 and a half K. You've got a big climb, which is gonna be kind of relentless. You're gonna kind of need to break that up best you can. Once you get to the top of the climb, then just really let your body do the work and the gravity do the work and just kind of fall down the hill. Um, and then when you're going through town, that's when you can really maximize spectators, friends, uh, if members of your team are out there, you can really kind of use that as motivation to kind of get you through the town, get you round past the, the checkpoint of, of a lap. Um, and then as you start the hill again, hopefully you're kind of motivated, you're kind of renewed with energy um, and you're ready to kind of go through that three step process again. But um, I guess similarly to the bike, you also can stash some special needs on the run. And again, like it's always good to stash it. If you've got a bag, it's always good to stash it, even if you don't use it, even if it's like your favorite gel, your favorite sweets, uh, an energy drink, can of Coke, wh whatever you want, just chuck it in the bag. And then if you feel like you need it halfway through the race, oh. if you feel like you need it halfway through the race, you can always stop and grab it. Um, but if you don't, you're not really missing out on anything. Thanks for watching my Iron Man Wales video. I think my biggest takeaways are, for anyone who doesn't know, this is my daughter, Amelia. She's 11 weeks old. She's adorable. Um, Thank you for watching the video. I hope you guys are taking some tips for Ironman Wales. You've got two weeks to get everything set and ready to go. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll see you down there. And I think Amelia might be there spectating too. So if you see me on the sidelines, uh, give me a shout, give me a wave, and I'll be shouting back at you.